Ted, you've been looking into this for a long time. Tell me what you learned about STRS here in Ohio. Well, the first thing that I, that I learned about STRS was that while it's a public pension fund and public pension funds are supposed to be subject to public scrutiny, they're supposed to be the most transparent pensions in the world. This pension has a longstanding policy of, of opposing transparency. There's a, a lot of secrecy there. They're not, they don't comply with public records laws. And with that secrecy comes a very high cost. If you don't allow the public to see what's going on, then the chances that there are uh, financial abuses rampant within the organization are very high. One of the things that I found most shocking is that two members of the board who say all of your research backs up what they have long believed also say they can't get the information themselves. How is it that board members aren't given a transparent look at the documents, the history, and the investments of the STRS? Well, this is a, a, a common uh, trend across the country. We're seeing the same thing going on in Pennsylvania right now, where board members are being denied access to critical documents. And so the problem with secrecy is that there are two levels of secrecy. One is what is being kept secret from the board? What is Wall Street keeping secret from the board? And then the next thing is what is the board keeping secret from the public? So if you don't allow, if the school teachers in Ohio aren't allowed to see the investment documents, uh, they can't, they, they don't know that the people on the board are even seeing those documents. So, so there's a double uh, whammy when you have secrecy. What did your audit show? Well, the audit showed that uh, in addition to the lack of transparency and the secrecy was that the pension money was being squandered that there were all kinds of uh, investments that raised serious questions and that the fees that the pension were pay was paying was extremely high. And among other things, I concluded that if the pension was prudently managed, there was ample money to pay the 3% cost of living adjustment that teachers and retirees had been promised over the years. So where's the money going? What are we talking about Wall Street fees? Because they have they have managers, they're employed by STRS, right? Why are all the fees going to Wall Street? Well, they STRS has an investment staff that is lavishly compensated uh, with bonuses far above what the private sector in Columbus or anywhere in Ohio uh, would pay. So they're, the investment staff at STRS not only does a, in my opinion, incompetent job, they're also, uh, their compensation is just off the charts. Um, and then in addition to the investment staff at STRS, they hire Wall Street money managers. It would be names you, I mean, you might have heard of, Fidelity, Goldman Sachs, I'm just pulling names out of the hat. So there are external money managers hired by the pension fund in addition to the pension investment staff. The big money is going to the external money managers and to actually a group that are known as alternative investment managers. These are billionaires that are running private equity, hedge, and venture capital funds. When you say a big part of the money, what, are, what kind of money are we talking about? Is this millions a year? Oh, certainly, yes. Um, so you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, 30 or more percent of the of a hundred billion dollars, so 30 billion dollars roughly, is being uh, allocated to alternative investment managers who are getting paid, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars a year. I've been told the average retiree in on STRS in Ohio gets about forty-two thousand dollars a year. What were the bonuses like for these money managers? Well, the bonuses for money managers are, are typically two uh, percent or so. So they're they can be huge. If you're managing, you know, a couple hundred million dollars, the bonuses can uh, can amount to tens of millions of dollars. Those are the external money managers on Wall Street. The internal, the STRS staff, then they, they may get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, but the Wall Street guys are getting paid 
hundreds of millions of dollars, individually and collectively billions of dollars. So the staff is getting hundreds of thousands in base pay or in bonuses? In both. I think they, they, get, some, they get some in base pay and then they get bonuses on top of that. Well, I know you have researched this uh, a lot. You've, you've written a bestseller about the way pensions are being uh, abused, especially these public pensions. So why is it, why is it that you, we would think that people like police officers and firefighters and our teachers, that we would want to give them protections for their pensions? Why are these public pensions so vulnerable? Yeah, there are a host of reasons why public pensions get preyed upon. Uh, first and foremost is that they're not governed by ERISA, the Employee Retirement Income Security Act, which is a comprehensive federal law that protects corporate pensions. Six, billion, six trillion dollar loophole is state, county, and city pensions are not governed by ERISA. So that makes them a prime target for scammers. And then the, the other thing that is that is is disturbing is that these pensions have boards that consist of people that lack financial expertise. So there's school teachers, firefighters, uh, sanitation workers, political appointees, but again, very rare to have people on these boards with expertise. And remarkably, as you mentioned in SDRS Ohio, the two members of the board who have expertise in investments agree with my findings. The ones who, who don't, don't agree with my findings, but I think it's very telling. Yeah, but your, your findings have launched uh, an audit that's apparently underway here. So when you look at STRS, I mean, how would you assess it overall? How, how does it compare to other pensions and how they're managed around the country? STRS has many of the same uh, you know, serious flaws that pensions all over the country have. Um, public pensions all over the country uh, all lie about their investment performance. They all lie about the fees they pay. They all lie about the risks they take. They all uh, are thwart uh, Freedom of Information Act requests. So these are common problems across the country. And they all have ramped up the fees they're paying to Wall Street higher than ever before. So STRS has many uh, of the same problems that pensions around the country have. But the problems in Ohio are much greater than just STRS. You have a retirement study council who's supposed to provide legislative oversight into your five state pensions. They're not doing their job. That's There's no debate that the they're supposed to do an audit every 10 years. They haven't done that audit. You got a five of 250 billion or so in pensions in Ohio that are not getting regularly audited. That should be uh, alarming. Uh, and, and the finding in my report, uh, the Ohio Retirement Study Council said, well, sorry, we missed, we failed to do the audit within the legal time. Uh, but no one seems to be terribly alarmed about that. You know, should they be alarmed? They should be. I mean, later today, after the close of the market, Amazon is going to be announcing its findings, its, its financial results for the quarter. What if Amazon said, sorry, we didn't get an audit done? What do you think would happen to the stock of that company? It would plummet. The lack of financial accountability, transparency would destroy the enterprise. Here you've got a, you know, a retirement study council that we, with respect to three out of the five Ohio public pensions, they have not been doing the legally required audit. That should be very, very alarming. You know, I've talked to some of these teachers who haven't had a cost of living increase, some of them since they retired, they've never had one. Uh, some of them for seven, 10 years now with no cost of living increase. How should they be feeling when they read your report and when they hear those findings? Well, they should be outraged. I mean, and what happened in Ohio is remarkable. Uh, 20,000 school teachers, retirees largely, uh, got together to commission a second opinion by the nation's leading expert. 
the the pension fund didn't pay for this review the pension fund opposed this review it will be as of this month we asked for these documents we requested the documents the investment documents a year ago as of this month it is a year that they have been stonewalling us so the teachers got together found an expert who could come in and give them a second opinion and the opinion is that the fund is rampantly mismanaged i mean just widespread mismanagement and the cost is amounts to tens of billions of dollars this pension fund would have all the money it needs to make the benefit payments that have been promised had the money been properly managed over the last 20 years. How did you do your audit if you couldn't access all the documents? Well, that's what a forensic expert does is we connect the dots, uh, like just like the show CSI Miami, we go into a room and there's a dead body. And the question is, did the person die of natural causes or was there foul play? Well, of course, the person who committed the murder is never going to come to you and say, here, here's all the documents. A forensic expert has a range of expertise and his job or her job is to connect the dots. And a lot of the information uh, is available in the public domain on the Internet. And a lot of, frankly, a lot of the information is on the Ohio SDRS website. They often will oppose uh, public public disclosure of information that's already public. And they did in my case, they, they, they opposed certain uh, documents that I already had. So, uh, but largely a forensic expert is brought in to connect the dots when you're not given all the documents. So what's the one thing that you think we should be most outraged by? Well, I think the, there, let's see, there are two things that people should be most outraged by. One is the fact that the Retirement Study Council, the legislative oversight has completely failed to do its job. This is a much bigger problem than just Ohio STRS. Uh, and that's costing the taxpayers in Ohio billions and billions of dollars. This is, there is no single pool of money uh, in Ohio of greater taxpayer consequence than your five public pension funds. Uh, the lack of legislative oversight is, is just obvious. They're supposed to do an audit every 10 years. In the case of many of these funds, they're, they're, they're six, nine, 10 years overdue. And the other thing that really should be very disturbing is the lack of transparency. So many of these problems would go away if the if these the five pensions in Ohio had to be fully transparent, and whenever you're investing public money, there should be public scrutiny. You talked about the economic impact. Are you talking about the fact that teachers aren't getting the money that they would then be putting out into the economy? Well, first, I'm talking about that these pensions have squandered billions, tens of billions of dollars. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if the 200 and so 200, 250 billion or so in uh, Ohio pension funds have lost 25 billion over the years through gross mismanagement. That's a lot of money for the state of Ohio. And that's money that's just being thrown away, uh, given to Wall Street. They've taken money from school teachers. They've taken the promised COLA payments from school teachers and in a wealth transfer, given it to Wall Street. And so the, the amount of money that's been squandered over time through mismanagement and lack of accountability is a very significant number for people, in, for taxpayers in Ohio. You know, and when you think about it, teachers, they're public servants who, who don't go into education to get rich. Two of my, my two sisters are teachers. They didn't do it. They did it because they love kids and they love education. And they're kind of the victims of all of this, aren't they? They're absolutely the victims. They were told, they were sold a bogus bill of goods. They were told that to shore up their pension, it was necessary to cut the COLA benefits they had been promised. That simply was not true. The reason the pension needs shoring up is because the investments have been mismanaged over time. So they were, 
told that if they took these benefit cuts, the pension would uh, be more sustainable. But it's that's also not true because as long as the mismanagement continues, you can uh, cut the benefits all day long, but the pension fund is never going to be fully funded. Well, I, I, is there anything else that you think we missed talking to you? Because I want to make sure I pick your brain while I have you. <laughs> well, um, no, I, 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 well, I would just say that the, some of the very promising uh, facts that we've had in Ohio, well, some of the very promising facts that, that I encountered in Ohio was that there are, uh, two Facebook groups that are really doing a terrific job of getting the word out and uh, attempting to to force transparency. We've got two board members who agree. We've got the state auditor who apparently is going to do something. I, I would hope that the state auditor is not going to do a special audit only to conclude there's nothing to audit. Uh, so they, so some, there's some very promising things going on uh, in Ohio. Um, and so that's the only other thing I would mention. There's some things that, there are some promising factors that leads me to believe there, that there may be a favorable outcome. 